Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Hutchinson City Council meeting for Tuesday, January 25th, 2022. We'll call the meeting to order. Uh, approve any council agenda additions or corrections? Uh, Mayor Council, I don't have any additions or corrections for you. I make a motion to approve the agenda as presented. I'll Set. second. Motion by Chad, second by Mary to approve the agenda. Any other discussion? <clears throat> All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Convocation, Hunters Ridge Community Church. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I was here um, two weeks ago. And you were giving me credit for the beautiful warm weather. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not sure how to take it tonight. <laughs> let's, uh, let's begin with prayer here. <laughs> Father, uh, thank you for this uh, chance to meet tonight. And at least uh, for me, I have the opportunity to pray for the welfare of the city of Hutchinson to pray that it would be a place of peace, to pray that uh, it would be a place of uh, flourishing um, for our community, for our homes, our neighborhoods, um, our churches, uh, just our community in general, Lord. And I think about also uh, praying for our healthcare workers, people in our hospitals, and, uh, for our schools, for our teachers and students. Um, we just wanna bring them before you the challenge is that uh, many of them face. I also want to bless uh, our leaders here tonight, uh, and Gary Forsier and Patrick May and Dave Sebesta, Mary Christensen Chad and Matt, uh, Melissa and Kent. And uh, if I'm missing others, Lord, uh, forgive me, but I just want to pray for them, Lord, that you'd bless them in their uh, deliberations tonight, give them wisdom, uh, give them encouragement, um, uh, we pray and thank you for the, the many um, um, uh, people who serve this community, our police, uh, especially Tom Gifferson and all he leads, and Matt, the fire department, our emergency responders, even our business leaders, Father. Uh, again, Lord, we ask that you would, um, you would be speaking to them and, and bless them, Father. And again, Lord, uh, I guess... Uh, I want to encourage you, you to push us, to push us towards you, God. For blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And so, God, thank you for this time that they gather tonight. And I pray all this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Recognition of gifts, donations, and community service to the city. Does anybody have anything? All right, we got a, uh, actually three resolutions. Um, it's all right, I'll do all three of them at once. Yep. Uh, it is resolution number 15411, resolution accepting cash donations to the Hutchinson Police Department from Thomas Kennedy. B is resolution number 15412, resolution accepting cash donation to the Hutchinson Police Department from the Village Ranch. And C is resolution number 15417, resolution accepting cash donations to the Hutchinson Police Department and Hutchinson Fire Department from William M. Nimitz Estate. Mayor Council, I think it'd be appropriate for us to acknowledge the, the donation that we received. I mean, obviously all of these are a blessing to the city, but the one that we received from the, the Nimitz estate is almost $300,000. Um, that's going to our police and our fire. And I, I, know, I don't think they have an exact idea on what uh, they're gonna be using that, uh, that for, but I know it's something that they wanna make sure is 
honorable to to the Nemesis State, but that's a pretty significant donation to to the city. Like I said, we we always welcome any type of donation, but generally we're not receiving that high of a donation <laughs> to the city. So I thought it was important to at least to acknowledge that um, for the police and fire station. So. Motion to accept. I will make a motion to accept all three of those resolutions and thank you to each and every one of those resolutions. I will second that. Motion by Mary, second by Chad to accept all three resolutions, donations. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Public comment, uh, citizen addressing the council, just please come forward, say your name and address. Narrate the uh, approval of minutes. We have the regular meeting minutes of January 11th, 2022. Make a motion to approve them. Second. Motion by Chad, second by Pat to approve the regular meeting minutes of January 11th. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Um, consent agenda, this will be done by one motion unless somebody pulls something off for discussion. Uh, it is the approval of issuing short-term gambling license to the Shady Lane Sportsman's Club on June 18, 2022 at the McLeod County Fairgrounds. B is uh, approval of engineering service agreement with Erickson Engineering for a bridge deck rehabilitation project. Uh, C is uh, approval of rescinding the Hutchinson City COVID-19 vaccination and testing and face covering policy. B is uh, approval of resolutions to donate surplus property. Um, we have two do uh, resolutions underneath there. Resolution number 15413, Dispatch Council to Blue Earth County, and Resolution number 15414, Dispatch Council to McLeod County. Uh, e is approval of Resolution number 15418, Resolution Adopting Facts of Finding of Facts and Reasons for Approval of Conditional Use Permit to Allow a Tattoo Establishment in a C3 Central Commercial District at 18 Main Street South with Favorable Planning Commission Recommendation. F is Approval of Resolution Number 15419, Resolution Adopting Facts, Finding of Facts and reason for approval of conditional use permit to move structure larger than 200 square feet from 135 Franklin Street north to 225 Washington Avenue West with favorable planning commission recommendation. Uh, G is approval of amending uh, addendum to the development agreement between the city of Hutchinson and Hutchinson Uptown Commons LLC. H is approval of amending it to addendum to a develop agreement between the city of Hutchinson and Hutchinson Cobble LLC. Uh, I is uh, reappointment of Mike Cannon to the EDA board to December of 2027. And J is uh, claims appropriation and contract payments. Is there anything anybody wants pulled off? Entertain a motion to approve the balance. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Motion by Chad, second by Pat to approve. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Uh, we have a public hearing. Uh, we're gonna... I would suggest you move down to um, communications requests and petitions. We still have 20 minutes before our public hearings are to start. So. All right. Uh, Creekside year end report. Twenty minutes gives me plenty of time to work with. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> 
Good evening, Mayor, Council, those in the audience that are watching at home for don't know who I am, Andy Kosa, Creekside Soils Manager, here tonight to give you a, a quick recap on uh, refuse and confluence funds, uh, just a review of operations for 2021. So I'd like to start out with just the Creekside Soils mission statement here and uh, to help abbreviate the, the presentation, I won't read through it um, as it was included in the packet, but this is something that was created uh, 10 plus years ago, I don't recall exactly when, but it's something that still stands true today. Um, and I feel that we as an operation or as a department adhere to it quite well um, and, and look to do so moving forward into the future. So jumping forward into the refuse fund, just to clarify or give definition of what that fund is responsible for, um, as, as stated in Creekside, it consists of the two, the two funds, compost and refuse. The refuse fund, through the, through the refuse fund, the city of Hutch charges its residents monthly garbage fee for the collection and disposal of the municipal solid waste, MSW, otherwise known as just garbage or trash, and the source separated organic material, which will be referred to as SSOM here in the presentation. Uh, the garbage fees collected from the residents are used to pay the contracted hauling and collection services to West Central Sanitation for both the MSW and SSOM. The landfill disposal charges for the MSW and the expenditures for the source separated operations that take place out at Creekside, which include building improvements and capital equipment expenditures. Um, the MSW material is disposed of at a local landfill, Spruce Ridge on Mabiski, at the expense of the refuse fund based on a cost per ton contract rate, and the source separated organic material is collected. That is collected is received at Creekside where it's composted into a soil product that's currently being used by other city departments. So in the refuse fund, there's really not a whole lot of data to track other than the tonnages that are received and processed. It's a pretty pretty basic fund, if you will. Um, so taking a look at this graph here, we've got the MSW tonnages received, SSOM tons received, and then the, the residual tons received over the course of the last 10, 11, 12 years. So looking at what we received in 2021, I shouldn't say what we received, but what was collected for MSW uh, 2000. 2,421 tons up slightly from, from 2020. Um, and you'll notice obviously a, a rather, not super significant, but a bit of a significant jump from 2019 uh, between the last two years, which doesn't necessarily coincide with the green line there, the incoming SSOM, but it's assumed that the increase in the last two years of MSW tons is because of the pandemic. People are at home getting into the purge mode obviously results in tonnages that, that are being collected by, by West Central and ultimately disposed at the landfill. The green line there, the source separated tons that we received at Creekside, has been a downward trend over the last dozen years or so. A little bit of an uptick last year, which was, again, it's more or less pandemic related, nice weather, people were at home, people were doing things. Uh, but then we see a significant drop here in 2021, which at this point we can only allude to weather conditions. It was a hot, dry season, grass clippings weren't growing or grass, grass wasn't growing, so people weren't disposing of their clippings in their carts, uh, just smoky conditions, people weren't working outside, and then <clears throat> the society opening back up, people getting out and traveling more. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with that in, in, in 2022 here. Uh, the blue line down on the bottom is the residual tonnage that uh, are ultimately separated from the source separated incoming tons. Um, that 219 tons is pretty much on par uh, for the last several years or compared to the last several years. And that's the material that once the SSOM is processed, screened, these are the rejects, the garbage, the inert material that ultimately are picked out via equipment and sent to the landfill. Over the last five, six years, we've pretty much been averaging a 15% contamination rate, um, which it's okay to see that we're maintaining stability there, but there's many programs out there that are 5%, less than 5%, and even quite a few programs that are out at 1% or less contamination rate. So that's something, definitely something we'll be striving for, and I'll touch on it a bit here a little bit later in the presentation, but 15% uh, is, you know, status quo isn't good anymore. This is, it's time to, to improve the, the cleanliness of that material received. So again, Noting that there isn't a whole heck of a lot to, to report on, jumping into the financials for the refuse fund. Um, as, as noted here, relatively stable. Uh, we've seen a, just over 1% increase in revenues for the year, um, following that center column, the 2021 prelim. And again, just to note out that these are prelim. The year-end revenues should be pretty well set for the year. 
However, the expenditures may tick up here in the next few weeks as, as the last few expenses roll in, invoices roll in. So at the end of the year, net revenue of a positive $48,296,000, 48296 If you'll note, the 2021 budget, we, were, we actually budgeted for a loss of $888,000. That was, the intention there was to do the source separated processing system upgrade in 2021. We ran into some snags with MPCA, so now that project has been pushed back to 2022. So these expenses will now show in, in 2022, hopefully uh, providing MPCA issues our permit here earlier in the year. Just noting down below the depreciation capital outlay and the transfer out, those are included in the year-end expenditures up above, but just a single amount to, to give you an idea where those are at. The $55,000 transfer to the tree disease infestation mitigation fund has been in place since 2010 and since then has transferred $660,000, excuse me. So moving on to the compost fund and again here too, just to give a little clarity and what that fund is responsible for. The Creekside compost fund serves as a drop off site for compostable and recyclable materials such as logs, brush, yard waste, clean, clean concrete and blacktop at no charge to both residents and contractors. With these materials, Creekside produces, markets and distributes bulk and bag compost mixtures as well as a variety of bulk and bag colored mulches to local customers and to distributors with a current sales territory of 13 states from the Midwest, upper Midwest to the inner mountain West. Uh, we sell, sell these, Creekside sells the bag products under three labels, the Splendor Row brand, which is an economy series, the Creekside brand is what we consider a premium series, and then the Wonder Blend, Wonder Blend brand, which we consider a professional series. So if you're out and about looking for your bag soil needs, we would certainly appreciate keeping an eye out for these and <laughs> helping, helping support Creekside soils. Um, Creekside also supplies horticultural materials along with aggregates to various city departmental projects at a reduced cost. So here too, the, the, the compost fund is a little more involved uh, than the refuse, so there's a little bit more data here to track, but starting on the front side of the operation, it all starts with the incoming materials. Um, and this is more or less just the, the yard waste and wood waste received. This doesn't include the concrete and blacktop as that information is up and down from year to year based on public works as their engineering street projects and what have you. So it's, it's just a roller coaster of essentially not good data. Um, but looking at 2021 total tonnages received, we're came in at 13,715 ton, which is pretty much right on par to the last couple of years. Um, we separated out, it's included in, in the total, but we separated out, separated out what the total tonnage is received from the city of Hutch local, um, the just shy of coming in a shift, just shy of 5,400 ton. And then the, the red line down below is the residual tons um, that, that are generated out of the yard waste material, which is, has been essentially zero for the last numerous years. And the reason that is, is because the materials that we receive are clean enough that when it goes through the process, we screen it out it's more or less just wood and maybe some uncomposted material that we're able to reintroduce back into the system, essentially alleviating a need to, to landfill any, any waste out of that material. At some point, the concentration levels will get high enough that we'll ultimately have to start to disposing some of the residuals at the landfill, but uh, so far, so good. I don't see that for hap foresee that happening anytime soon. So just looking at the, at the bottom there, just a, a notation is kind of a, a split of where the materials come from and what types. Right now, we're... In 2021, we came in at basically a 50-50 split yard waste to, to wood waste. Of that total 13,715 ton, 39% of that came from the city of Hutch. 17% of that came from Cloud County, which is more or less the municipal sites at the other cities in the site when we go and clean them out in the fall. And 33% of it comes from St. Cloud, in which we mobilize equipment to their site and bring it back to Hutch for further processing. Uh, and then the city of Wilmer came in at 11% for more or less 1,510 tons of wood waste. So what we do with all that material, once it's processed, we put it in a bag and we sell it. Uh, looking at the center bar graph there on the left-hand side, the 2021, we closed out at 1,588,750 bags sold, down approximately 50,000 bags or 3% from 2020. Um, not necessarily a big surprise there. 2020 was a phenomenal year, uh, a weird year with everything going on. 2021, we didn't really know necessarily know what to expect, expect but we were certainly pleased how, how things came out. 
So just looking ahead to 2022 with a 1.2, just oh, 1,283,000 bag projection, that's certainly conservative. Um, your guess is as good as ours as to what's going to happen in the market if there's going to be a correction in the horticultural world or not. So again, just a, a little bit more of a conservative look on on this year. Hopefully, hopefully the 1.5 north north of 1.5 million bags becomes the norm. But um, at this point, we're just we're, we're looking at being conservative. Jumping over to the right hand side, the yards of bag yards of material needed for bagging. Last year, 2021, we bagged just, just shy of 51,000 yards of material, up about 1,000 yards from 2020. Whereas if you look back, you know, the bag sold and you look at the yards of material needed, it doesn't necessarily jive. Um, we sold less bags in 21, but we needed, but we bagged more material than the previous year. Well, that's more or less just because of different bag sizes. We bag anything from a half a cubic foot to a three quarter cubic foot, one cubic foot two cubic foot and several in between. So like in this case for 2021, we more or less sold more two cubic foot bags, which requires more volume to fill those bags. So hopefully that helps kind of clarify the discrepancy there and, and why that information doesn't necessarily jive by the, by the look. And then again, just the, the 2022 projections with a lower, lower bag sales volume projection, we're looking at just over 47,000 yards at this point of, of yardage needed to, to package for this season. A little bit, quick breakdown of, of the bags actually, of where they go and who they're for, so to say. Uh, the, the blue part of the, of the pie graph is the Creekside brands. Again, the Splendor Grow, the Creekside, and the Wonderblend brands, whereas the red are private label brands. Um, in most cases, the private label brands, the customers are bringing their bulk material to us. We put it in their bag. Um, as you can see in 2021, that number, the private label number decreased by uh, give or take 65,000. And it's more so we, a longtime customer actually out of the metro, uh, the freight battle logistics finally caught up with them that they started working with a more local to them bagging contractor, which it, it's one of those things that you certainly can't blame them. I mean, we, we need to maintain profitability. We couldn't lower our price enough to offset their savings or what their expenses were on the freight. So um, sadly enough, we'll, we'll ultimately lose all of that business here in 2022. However, seeing the increase in the Creekside brands, we're hoping we'll certainly offset that this year and, and, and years to come. Uh, just looking at a couple of the mile high 2021 mentionables, bag sales as, as just noted, and bag sales once again exceeded projections in 2021 due to ideal spring conditions and lingering effects of consumers staying at home. Uh, no Bitcoin sales in 2021 due to lack of inventory which accounts for approximately a, a decrease of $245,000 in bulk sales. However, a crushing event did occur in December of 21, just last month, so we will have inventory available here for 2022. Some much needed bagging line upgrades took place to uh, an in-feed hopper, a conveyor, and a volumetric feeder, um, which will be instrumental as time goes on, and I'll, I'll touch on it here in the, in the financials, but also the objectives here for 2022. And then lastly, it was just a, a redesign of the Splendor Grow brand mulch bag. The old bag design is on the left-hand side, the clear bag, whereas the, the new design is on the right-hand side. This will be the last of the bag redesigns that we have on tap here for, for several years. We did the Splendor, Splendor Grow soils here in 2020. We did the Creekside and the Wonderland brands in 2020. Excuse me, Splendor Grow would have been back in 2019. The Creekside and Wonderblend would have been in 2020, whereas we followed up with uh, finally the, the last of them of the Creeks or the Splendor Grow mulch bags here in 2021. So looking at the compost finances for the year, um, year-end revenues came in at just shy of 2.9 million, down almost 11% from 2020. Um, and again, noting that we did not have Bitcoin sales, which accounts for 245,000 if that were to have been factored in that would have closed that gap. We would have been just north of 3.1 million in sales and only a change of uh, 3%, down 3% from 2020. However, as, as the year played out as it did, we still came in nearly $500,000 over budget in, in, in year end revenues. Year end expenditures, just shy of 3.2 million. Obviously it came in above budget, but that'd be, that's because of cost of sales and the increase in, in sales revenue. Um, which closed out the year with a net revenue of a loss of 306,000. 
um, down 37% from, from the previous year. But up from, from budget, obviously, a, a lot of an anticipated loss of 639746 I think the definitely point I wanted to point out, which kind of goes back to the, to the bagging line improvements here, is the, the gross profit margin percentage. At this point, 2021 is looking to close out at just shy of 37% margin, gross profit margin. Up, what do we have? Yeah, just over 3% um, from 2020, but up 6% from, from 2021 budget. And a lot of that has to do with our cost of materials aren't necessarily getting any better. Just like anything else, prices are increasing, but the efficiencies that we're, that we're seeing with the staff and the equipment, the equipment upgrades that, that we did late last fall, um, it was later in the year, so it didn't necessarily affect the overall numbers, but that's going to pay dividends moving forward, just more reliability, more down, less downtime, um, and in, improved production. So again, just the, like I noted on the refuse fund, it's just singled out the depreciation, capital outlay, and the transfers out just down below, um, just to give, to give a better idea on the cash flow of the fund. Transfer out of $110,000. It's been at 110 dollars now for the last four or five years, maybe a little bit longer. But since 2009, the fund has transferred just over $1.2 million back to the general fund. So looking ahead here to this year, 2022, um, a couple of the, the, the main objectives is, again, this, the, the refuse funds implementing of the new composting process and equipment for SSOM which is a covered area and static pile. Still awaiting the MPCA to permit approval. I did have a conversation with our MPCA engineer last week and things sound favorable. Um, the, we get the song and dance that they're busy, they're understaffed, overworked, all that good stuff. But he did say hopefully within the next, within the next few weeks that they will, will get on our application and, and he gave me his word whether he can take it for that, but the permit will be issued. So with that being said, we're gonna just start start soliciting um, consultants for the design phase of the work and, and get that project in motion so we can hopefully break ground on it here late spring, early summer with a completion, anticipated completion date of, of this fall. Another big item we'll be working on is uh, formulating an educational campaign for the curbside program uh, to increase participation and minimize the contamination. Um, we did apply for an MPCA Greater Minnesota Composting Grant through the PCA, obviously, um, to assist in covering those expenses. That's expected to be announced in March, I believe, um, if it will be awarded or not. And if, if we are awarded, that'll be, that'll be huge. Um, it'll be, a, as, men, as noted there, a three, four year campaign. There's gonna be persistence. It's, gonna, it's not a one and done, you know, try to do a, a social media blast or, or something to that effect. I mean, it's gonna be a long ongoing program that will, will hopefully influence behavioral changes um, in, in what people are, are disposing of in their, in their organics cart. Now, one of the last things there is to continue to strive to increase the bags per hour production rates through staff training and equipment upgrades. As noted to the a couple slides ago, the, the equipment upgrades to the bagging line um, will pay dividends moving forward. In 2021, our overall production rates increased by 16.4% over 2020 to 100, or excuse me, 873 bags per hour, which translates into 123 bags per hour more in 21 than in 2020. It doesn't sound like a whole heck of a lot, but 123 bags an hour on an eight hour shift is a thousand bags. Turn that into five days a week, that's 5,000 bags, so on and so forth, you can do the math. That's, that's the, the, the one most key component in our profit margin um, increasing like it is, is just the efficiencies in that operation and the bagging operation. We've got awesome staff that take pride and are passionate about what they do, so hats off to them. Hopefully we can keep them around. Hopefully everybody stays healthy. Um, but yeah, definitely, definitely huge to, to, the, to the success of the department. And just as a side note, in 2019, we were at a 653 bags per hour up. So 2021 actually was up over 33%, so, which is just phenomenal. Other than that, it kind of goes without saying, but another main objective is just simply to stay healthy throughout the year. So with that, questions, comments? Bitcoin, who does that, who do we sell that to? That's available to anybody, general public, contractors. If you got a driveway you want to cope yep. with it, you yep. Okay. yep. We, it's the same price no matter who buys it, it's all sold by the ton. 
Um, we do have a $30 minimum just to make it worthwhile for our lawyer to, to go back to the pile, but they, that's available to anyone essentially at any it time. It goes pretty quick though, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, the last, and this, I should have noted too, the crushing event we did here in December was 20,000 ton. The last several previous crushing events we did were all 30,000 ton just because we didn't have the raw feedstocks um, this last year. I'll try to say this so it makes sense. The last crushing event took place in the fall of, <laughs> the fall of 19 for 30,000 ton. So we started 2020 with 30,000 tons of available material that was gone by the end of the year. That was gone by the end of, uh, end of fall. Basically the remnants of it went to, to a public works job or the pavement management job. So this 20,000 ton that we have now in inventory is gonna go fast, which is good. Nice to get back. Yeah, very much so. So Andy, on your uh, mulch, it, it said the red, don't you have different colors? Yeah, that was just thrown on there as one example. Yeah, we have red, gold, brown, and we actually added black now to the lineup this year. Um, and then, then obviously just natural uncolored. So there's five different colors or shades of, of mulches that we produce. Yes. Because you used to have two colors of brown, correct? We used to. Yeah. We used to have a light brown and a dark brown, and we found that there was um, more interest in the darker brown, so sure. so we discontinued the light. Yeah. See, I played a game at Hanson Gravel where I would guess which brown I had around my house, and I would guess it wrong every other year. So, um, so thankfully, you eliminated that issue, but I went back and forth about four or five years. Sure. Light brown, dark brown, light brown, dark brown. So. <laughs> Anything else for Andy? Thank you very much, Andy. Thank you. We're going to have a public hearing. Uh, Kent, this. We actually got the uh, EDA public hearing yes, first. Sir, it's okay. Uh, modification to the development program for the development. District number four and the creation of a tax increment finance plan for the establishment of the Tish District number four 22, the redevelopment district. Uh, Mayor and Council, this is actually similar to what we took on at the last meeting. Um, the developer is still working on some information, so I guess we would ask, correct, right, Mark, to have them call it to. Have them call the public hearing to order and then to um, entertain a motion to continue the public hearing till six o'clock, February 8th. 8th. Well, it would be five o'clock on February 8th. I'm sorry. Five o'clock, February 8th, because we have an election that day. Yep. So. We go now. You have need a motion now. Yep. So moved. Mm -hmm. Second. Motion by Pat. Second by Mary to approve. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Um, open the public hearing. Nope, you just recessed it. Recessed it. Okay. Yep. So now you can go to item number nine. So. All right. Uh, assessment hearing and project award for the 2022 pavement management program. Project letting number one, project number 2201. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, like was mentioned, uh, we're, we're administering the, the assessment here and ultimately uh, the project award for our letting number one, our, our pavement management program project this year. Uh, I'll start out, I'll just uh, review the scope of the project. We'll talk a little bit about the bids, uh, touch on assessments, and uh, I'll just touch on uh, what final costs and how the funding uh, is being arrived at for the project also. So with that, uh, here's a drawing I know Council's seen a few times over the last few years as we've uh, administered work down in the, uh, the Linden Park Rec Center. Can you, turn, can you turn the light on to the... What's that? Oh, I thought you were that didn't work. There, go. there we go. Mm -hmm. uh, anyways, uh, 
Yeah, so uh, we started on the, uh, the east side uh, back in, uh, in uh, 2021, uh, the green streets, the red streets. Uh, we also administered uh, the blue on the west side. We did some overlay work back in 2020, uh, administered through our, our maintenance, our street maintenance funds. And then ultimately, uh, going into 2022 here, uh, we're into the, uh, the final uh, yes, phase of the project, the uh, Purple Streets, Linden, Sunset, uh, short uh, segment of uh, Laura, the one cul-de-sac, and then down on Neal Avenue and Key Street. I should mention, obviously, the, the pond project uh, was administered in uh, 20. 20 also, I gotta think back, no, actually 2019, excuse me, it's been a few years. Uh, so with that, yeah, we're, we're glad to see this uh, this work come to a close down in this neighborhood. As far as how we're gonna phase the work or stage the work and how we've uh, prescribed it for the contractor within our, our bidding documents. Just briefly, and I won't get into the gory details, but uh, we do, you know, specify uh, dates and how we want to see this administered. But in summary, uh, phase one uh, will be uh, the, uh, the north end of Sunset Street uh, and then down on Key Street. So we'll, we'll go in and uh, we'll get the contractor started early May to do that work for about a month. Uh, that'll then allow, uh, I guess, uh, side street parking to occur. They'll get that area to a gravel grade. Really, Key Street is, really doesn't have those issues, but we really wanted to knock out the uh, northerly end of sunset. Uh, so ultimately, as we enter phase two, or stage two, excuse me, uh, the south end of sunset, that, uh, that area up there to the north of... Uh, while the north end of sunset would be available for parking on a gravel grade. Uh, what becomes problematic in this area, obviously, are the, uh, the two cul-de-sacs, uh, you know, the access limitations that that presents. Uh, you know, that's the other reasoning for, for addressing that area uh, immediately adjacent to Lower Avenue right, up, right off the bat. Uh, then we get into stage, uh, Two, which is a combination of the area down here, the uh, south end of Sunset, Neal Avenue, and then we'll let the contractor loose up here on the stretch of Linden just to do the uh, spot utility work. We're not doing full scale water and sewer main replacements, but we are doing some spot gate valves, hydrants. Uh, I think we have a uh, storm manhole involved up in Linden there also and a little bit of sanitary sewer work that needs to be done. Uh, that's with the caveat, that's the note down in the lower right corner on our planning sheet here, that one of these access points uh, into the Southview neighborhood, Southview Court and Southview Drive respectively, uh, be left open during stage two and ultimately stage three, which will be the, uh, the roadway work on Linden Avenue. So, I don't know if there's any questions from council. This is a very detailed prescribed staging plan. Uh, contractors generally don't like this, but uh, we do this and we've been doing this for, for many years, uh, basically to protect the interests of the, the adjacent property owners. So a contractor doesn't simply rip up, rip open the whole project, uh, do this, do that as weather and rains come and, you know, mud is created and such, uh, you know, and then, you know, we're left with a large mud hole over a, the extents of the project conceivably. This really limits that risk with only allowing basically two, three blocks uh, being open at one given time. We don't believe this results in a whole lot of extra, I guess, overhead mobilization costs on the contractor's end. So it starts in May and then what yep. kind of uh, time ultimately, frame? Ultimately, yeah, you read the fine print. Uh, May 2nd is the, uh, the start date that we've uh, specified up there on the top. And then ultimately, 
the final completion date is September 16th. But there's you know a variety of interim dates along the way. Project cost wise. This is the original engineer's estimate uh, back when we ordered the, uh, the public hearing months ago. Uh, that's, that would be this column here. Uh, and then ultimately, it's our, our funding breakdown per, per the uh, actual bids that we received uh, back in mid-December. Uh, total cost-wise, uh, about uh, a difference of uh, $150,000 or so. Uh, and then we, we actually looked at the, uh, the funding breakdown and really the, the big change here is the cost of the uh, storm water work, which is really what's, uh, what's being arrived at is the discharge of the pond into Linden Avenue. So there's large pipe involved, large concrete structures and then also the extension of that system to the south on Sunset down to, to Neal Avenue and ultimately South Grade Road to more efficiently drain that South Grade and Sunset intersection, which has historically had some flooding issues uh, similar to, to Merrill to the east That's we extended that storm sewer system to last year. So. What, what happened, really, the increase in cost uh, was in those, that large concrete pipe, those large concrete structures, uh, pre, basically the precast concrete industry. So, yeah, otherwise we were pretty right, right on estimate uh, uh, with respect to the bids. So really, uh, the overrun uh, will be bared by the uh, stormwater utility fund in the end. Uh, assessment wise, yeah, the, uh, the assessment rolls within the packet. Um, none of the uh, proposed assessments to the respective property owners have changed from basically day one when we communicated the estimated assessments to property owners uh, when we ordered the assessment, or not the assessment here in the public hearing months ago. So we haven't heard a whole lot from property owners with respect to assessments over the last few months and then lastly city staff administered a construction um, meeting we called it uh, in a, we more so we focused on uh, the south view court and drive neighborhood and then the uh, two cul-de-sacs laura and craig really to bring those property owners into the conversation as, as we now know our specified completion dates, really to give them an update, what's, what's gonna happen on the project, how it's gonna impact you know, their access into their, their homes, quite frankly, uh, to get to their respective streets. Uh, like I said, Southview uh, area, we, we have a good plan. We believe it's uh, conceivable that the contractor can maintain access up into that area and stages work uh, accordingly along Linden. Uh, the two cul-de-sacs, obviously there's gonna be times when you're not gonna be able to get a vehicle in those, those cul-de-sacs. We're gonna try to minimize that and uh, provide parking down in the rec center parking lot. And I believe that's about it. Uh, the two resolutions, uh, adopting the assessment rule and uh, accepting the bids and awarding the project are within your packet. And then also the uh, bid tabulation uh, with all of the detail uh, with respect to the five bids that we received back on December 15th is also included. Uh, Want to note, like I, like I mentioned, the, the low bid was about 7% over our final engineer's estimate. Uh, we were a little bit surprised by that, honestly. Uh, we thought with bidding the project as early as we did uh, in the, you know, the, the winter months here, uh, you know, with the most uh, local agencies aren't getting a project of this nature out to bids prior to the holidays. Uh, we thought we might get a better price. Uh, we thought our estimate was a, a, 
a good estimate based on recent uh, unit prices that we've seen. So I think that just reflects uh, what's going on out in the industry and honestly what, uh, what may continue to occur into the future with respect to the uh, construction industry and costs, uh, you know, oil and labor and materials issues uh, out there. Yeah, I don't right now see the end of it, but uh, yeah, I think uh, we, were, we were surprised. I'll just say that much. We thought we might get a number lower than our estimate, but uh, like I said, the low number was 7% higher. With that, entertaining questions, thoughts? It'll be a busy area. You know, when the pool opens, you have all that traffic and, and the people that are trying to get in and out and, you know, yeah. it has to be done. <laughs> so. Yeah, and obviously we'll we'll work with uh, the Parks Department like we, we did uh, uh, the last few years when uh, the parking lot work and the uh, the work was being done to the east of uh, the rec center, you know, to, uh, yeah, we're no, not want to see any of that pool traffic, you know, trying to get onto sunset by all means. So, yeah, that's going to be isolated and, uh, and uh, we'll have the parks department communicate as such. That's good. Anything else yeah. for Ken? Open it up for public house. Yeah, need more. Or, yeah. Go ahead and. Sorry, <laughs> you need to open up for public comment. Yeah, open, open it up for public comment. Just please come forward and state your name and address. Hey, Kendra, you going to be around after the meeting and we have a couple of questions you'd like to ask you. Yeah, I can step outside. Yeah, once the hearing's down here. Motion to close. Yeah. Motion to approve. No, motion to close the public or hearing. Close. <laughs> Do I make the motion? Yes. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll second that. Yeah. You're still new. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> You're on. I was jumping ahead. Yeah. <laughs> by Pat. Second by Chad to close a public hearing. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Yeah. Opposed? Carried. Uh, can we do both resolutions, yep. Matt? Yes, can. We have two resolutions. Uh, we have resolution number 15415, resolution accepting bids and awarding contracts, and resolution number 15416, resolution adopting assessments. I'll make a motion to approve them both. I'll second. Motion by Chad, second by Mary to approve both resolutions. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Uh, we have no unfinished business. Uh, new business. I apologize if I kill your name, so. <laughs> Uh, issuing tattoo license to Douglas Molenton right. no. of Vela, Vela Hada Tattoo located at 18 Main Street. Uh, Mayor and Council, earlier in the night you guys approved, uh, I believe it was a conditional use permit. Um, and so with that adoption, um, Mr. Moulton is looking for um, a license to perform the business. So there was a background check and there's no objections to the, the license from uh, the police department, so staff would, um, I guess, ask the council to consider uh, approval of the license. I'll make a motion to approve the license. Second. Second. I'll third it. Dave third it. <laughs> motion by Chad, second by Pat to approve. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Welcome. <laughs> Good luck. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, adopting legislative priorities for 2022. Uh, Mayor and Council, um, at least I think probably going back now five or six years, we've uh, we've done an annual basis, try to approve legislative priorities, and this is just more or less a, a document that we communicate to our legislators. Um, regarding several different items that may be impacting um, the city. 
not a whole lot has changed um, from the, the previous years. A couple of things that that we've uh, taken out the list uh, because they've been addressed. Um, some of them have been on here for um, quite some time, just as uh, as uh, many things are going to the legislature and multiple years, and some is just. I guess an opportunity for us just to make a statement um, regarding other items. And so we want to at least give the, the opportunity for the council to take a look at these, ask any questions. Um, this is a culmination of input from both the directors, uh, myself, and even elected officials that have occurred over the years. And so unless you had any specific questions, I ask for you to, I guess, consider uh, uh, these priorities for the 2022 legislative session. So motion. Second. Motion by Dave, second by Mary to approve. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Yep. Opposed? Carried. Uh, setting canvassing board meeting. Sorry, I pulled it up here. So. Obviously, with our uh, special election that uh, is taking place on February 8th, we need to set a time to canvas those election results, and that it can take place any time between February 11th and February 18th. Um, it's just really up to the council. It's, what, a five-minute meeting, I think? Where you, sometimes six. Sometimes six, yeah, where you re basically read off the results of the then you have to canvas those results. So I think a lot of times we've done it uh, Friday morning um, after the election, but it's really up to, to you guys to determine when you want to do that. So, so will that Friday would be the 11th? Yep. 11th? Mm -hmm. I may be out of town that day, but like as long as you have a quorum, it doesn't matter. Correct. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah. 11th. What time? Seven o'clock. No. We were for any time after eight, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there is yeah. to eight thirty, yeah. so there is to seven o'clock. <laughs> yes. I was gonna say six. <laughs> That's fine. I'm up there anyway. So, uh, eight eight o'clock on Friday. Yep. Friday. Yep. Yeah. That work for you. Okay. Let's Make need a motion for that? Yes. Okay. Canvassing board will meet on 8 o'clock, February 11th. Very good. Motion by Mary, second by Dave to set the date for canvassing board. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Uh, we have public arts. Commission minutes from December 8th, 2021. We have the Hutchinson Housing Redevelopment Authority Board minutes from December 21st, 2021. The 2021 Residential Leaf Vacuum Service Annual Report and Planning Commission minutes from September 21st, 2021. Uh, staff update, uh, Chief Gifferson. Uh, I know, I don't know if you have anything else, but I'd like you to uh, talk about the snowmobiles, you know, where they can run and where they're not supposed to be. <laughs> sure. Good evening, everyone. Um, <laughs> Mayor Forcier asked me to speak regarding snowmobile and I guess the local ordinances regarding those and um, also I guess maybe just snowmobile etiquette is probably a good way to put it. Uh, it takes me about a half hour to go over all the ordinances, <laughs> so I'm not gonna do that, but um, I think the reason that uh, I was asked to speak about this is there's been some complaints about snowmobiles in parks, um, specifically Veterans Memorial Park. And uh, just the ordinance states that um, you, you need to keep your snowmobile on the trail. Um, uh, this is more for the public than you all, but um, keep your snowmobile on the trail um, and parks, playgrounds, golf courses, cemeteries, uh, school grounds, just about 
everywhere in, in the city of Hutchinson is off limits to snowmobiles except for the trail and the roadway. So our, our ordinance talks about um, taking the most direct route to and from um, either the trail or the city limits. Um, so the best way to do that is on the street. Um, unfortunately for snowmobilers, the Public Works Department does an excellent job of clearing snow. <laughs> so unless they want to drive their snowmobile down a tar road, which I don't recommend, uh, the best way to do that is uh, with a trailer. Um, and there's plenty of spots within the city uh, along the Loose Line Trail that they can utilize for loading and unloading their snowmobiles. Um, on Fellows Park um, is a good example. Um, it's probably also the park that gets used inappropriately the most, um, only because it is a good fueling stop if people are coming on and off the river and that type of thing. But technically, um, you're not supposed to be using your snowmobile in a public park. So um, we are a little bit lenient with that, uh, again, only because it is a pretty common fuel stop for folks, but um, if there's damage that occurs, then uh, we need to hold people accountable for that as well. So I don't know, any other questions regarding that? Or um, fortunately, we've had kind of a late winter uh, as far as snowfall is concerned. Um, and so we really haven't received the complaints um, that we normally do by this time of the year. But now with the little extra snow that we received over the past week, we are starting to receive some. So just good public information more than anything. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Tom, maybe you want to just touch on, we, had, we did have one snow emergency and I guess what we saw from that sure. snow emergency. Yep, uh, I don't even recall what day it was now, but... Uh, so Friday, Saturday. So. Friday into Saturday. So um, snow emergency was declared uh, as is customary. The first snow emergency of the year or of the snow season, um, we only ticket and do not tow. And so we followed that same procedure again this year. Um, and I believe, if I remember correctly, it was 95 parking citations that were issued between midnight and 5.30 a.m. So. And that was actually probably lower that, than yep, what we've had that's, in the past. That's better than usual. So, um, been times where we've towed that many, so. <laughs> Yikes. Um, Makes a towing company happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Makes the public works happy when they're off the road too. So, <laughs> uh, I just, I, you know, I would just urge people that there's several different ways that you can access information on when a snow emergency has been declared, um, and whether or not your your road outside your home has been plowed or not, the snow emergency is still in effect. So I think that's a misconception with a lot of people is that um, while well, my road was clear, so I parked on the road um, and that's not the way it works. Uh, it's till 7 a.m. Um, so between the hours of midnight and 7 a.m. during a snow emergency. Yeah, and I, I state that we are very reserved, I would say hesitant about calling a snow emergency. We don't do it very often and uh, and uh, we're doing it primarily just as a cleaning operation to expedite that and you know that usually is happening a day removed from the actual snow event if not made possibly a little longer so i think that's why people like, like chief gifferson alluded to uh yeah this, the roadway may be cleared to some degree because the initial plowing activity certainly has happened but there's during these larger events, we want to clean the roadway curb to curb. So that's why we're calling the snow emergency sometimes almost a day later after the event. So I can see where there can be some confusion from the general public, but we are very reserved at calling a snow emergency and, and don't want to put the, the PD, you know, in a spot where we need to tow 100 vehicles. We want to avoid that by all means. So. Just, yeah, I think this one was actually at one of those events where it was snowing quite a bit during the day, so it wasn't yeah. necessarily a, a day-removed yeah. event. Yeah. So. yeah. Anything else? 
Mr. Chief Jefferson. Thank you. All right, thank you. Alrighty. Um, Ken? Yes, a uh, few items. Uh, in front of you are, are two letters uh, with respect to U.S. Highway 212 and the ongoing efforts to uh, secure funding for improvements. And obviously from the city standpoint, we, we, uh, we support these efforts uh, and we advocate for them as, as much as possible that these efforts are primarily led by uh, Carver County. And with that, uh, the one letter, uh, they're both have today's date on them, but the one letter is, uh, I guess I'll call it the Dear Sir, Madam letter. That's just a general uh, support letter that can be passed on to Carver County and other advocates as they compile basically a group of letters from cities and counties uh, to, to go to state legislators and actually our, our federal uh, legislators also. And then the second one's a, a more specified, I guess, specific letter uh, with respect to a, uh, a plan update that's being administered by the Met Council uh, with respect to uh, the portion of 212 between uh, Nowhere Young America and um, Cologne. So that five mile stretch, I guess I'll call it the easterly gap uh, on 212, the easterly uh, two lane gap that uh, ultimately is uh, being sized up for four lanes. And I don't know if you've driven through there, I guess uh, last uh, later last summer and fall, you know, if, if you uh, took the trip all the way into the cities, uh, into the Carver area there, uh, you obviously probably noticed this substantial amount of dirt work, earthwork uh, uh, activity going on. So uh, yeah, the uh, westerly gap area is, is well underway construction wise. So with that, yeah, I would just, uh, unless there's any, any thoughts or concerns for council, I'll, I'll ask uh, Mayor Forcier to sign these letters so I can pass them on. Yeah, and I would just know we've, this is something we've done on a regular basis. Um, it's been something that we've got on the record of supporting, at least since I've been here, noting that really 212 is probably the greatest access to, uh, to I guess, large freight um, that we have for our community. So. Otherwise, uh, within the packet earlier this evening on the consent agenda, just uh, quickly want to touch on we're, we're going to begin the uh, project development of a bridge deck ceiling project for uh, all four of our bridges. And we've included the, uh, the Adams Street Bridge, which is now under the uh, county's jurisdiction. Um, and uh, we're, we're sizing up that project and uh, hopefully we can get it scoped, get it out for bids. And uh, just want to note that the uh, staff is beginning to look at the uh, traffic uh, impacts and traffic control, I guess, approach to this project. Depending on the, the amount of work for each respective bridge, uh, and there's some joint repair work that needs to be done on Fifth Avenue and School Road bridges, respectively. Those are obviously our, our older bridges. Uh, the work on those bridges may be somewhere uh, you know, for like Second Avenue and South Grade Road, the newer bridges might be around a week. The other bridges might be impacted for three weeks. So obviously that's gonna be a fairly significant traffic, uh, you know, closure on School Road and Fifth Avenue specifically. So uh, just wanted to make note of that and that's what that project's gonna entail. Uh, Bonding wise, uh, the governor released his uh, bonding list uh, a week or so ago and uh, the HATS bonding, HATS facility bonding was included on his list. Uh, the Lakes Improvements or the uh, Civil Air, Air Patrol uh, was not included. And that was, I think, to be, you know, suspected. Uh, the, our local legislator, specifically Re Representative Erdahl, has really been our our uh, advocate on the lakes improvements project. So uh, we look forward to seeing, I guess, the House's bonding list in the future here. You know, they noted having three projects come out of the community it would be extremely difficult to, <laughs> to see funded. So, 
And then a couple of items, snow removal wise, yeah. Uh, snow starting to pile up out there. Obviously boulevards are getting a little full, uh, but uh, we, we can't have uh, citizens plowing, pushing snow into the roadway. Obviously we have an ordinance against that and we don't want to see that. So yeah, keep the, the snow within the yards and on the boulevards. And then uh, also our sidewalks and the trails are starting to be impacted too. And uh, staff's gonna be out checking on our, our key routes uh, and enforcing our ordinance to some degree on that front with respect to snow removal on the sidewalks and trails. And then lastly, I just wanna say a thank you to Rice Lake contracting out on our almost $5 million wastewater headworks project. Uh, you know, obviously it's been a fairly chilly month here in January and uh, they've been hard at it out there. You know, the, the vast majority of the, the work going on out there is still exposed to the elements, uh, what they're doing. So uh, they are making uh, uh, plenty of headway out there on that project and wanna thank them for their efforts. That's it. Thanks, Ken. Mr. Sobor? Nothing else tonight. Pat, let's start with you. Ooh. All right. Um, not much. Things are other than uh, with the cold weather, but we're supposed to get a warm up, so hopefully uh, <laughs> we don't have to have as many layers of clothing. Well, you being a antifreeze salesman, <laughs> yeah. I think that's good for your business, isn't it? Pretty, pretty consistent no matter what the weather. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, do you have anything for us? No, I don't. Just be safe on the roads. Harry. Oh. Um, last weekend, I got to speak to the 55 and older group at Cross Point Church, and I gave them a little update on what was happening in the city. But before I did that, I gave them a little history of our city. So it was a nice group of people. It was nice to attend, and I thank them for asking me. Uh, and I have one other thing. Um, people who are out riding their bicycles at 6 o'clock in the morning should at least have a light on their bike or be wearing <laughs> some reflective gear. You know, I'm, I'm out and about at that time in the morning, and I could have hit somebody real easy this morning if I wouldn't have been really looking in the dark. <laughs> but, And I don't know if they're riding, if they're going to work or whatever, but there's a lot of people who are riding their bikes and they should at least have a headlight on that bike or be wearing something reflective. So just think about that when you're out and about it in the dark. Let's include walkers and runners too in mm -hmm. that. Oh, totally. Absolutely. Yeah. That's it. Thanks, Mary. Dad. I don't have anything extra to do. Mr. Yannick. Um, just a quick reminder that our next meeting in, on February 8th will start at 4, 4 p.m. in the afternoon because February 8th is our special election for the seat currently held by Pat. So just those reminders. That's it for me. Um, Kent kind of touched on it, but I had a, a few people come up to me and ask if we could plow some more of the trails in the city limits for walking trails, uh, like the one by the dog park from the dog park, or be the depot up to Second Avenue. Yeah, we, we haven't have historically plowed that. It's yeah, not yeah. on our priority list. Yeah, I know. It's, it's <laughs> really doesn't. I said so I'm for a transportation yeah. or a, a school kid purpose. So yeah. But, but there is a lot of walkers that use that trail, I know, so. Yeah, I can. that one's, it's, yeah, that's not going to be, it's got some drifting dynamics too, obviously, but. No, yeah, I, that one, <laughs> I can. Yeah, I'm the one around uh, that. Yeah, one. I mean, obviously the loose line trail isn't plowed, you know, so we kind of treat that in a similar manner, but. Uh, 
No, we can talk about it. I hate to make any promises because that's uh, that spills over into the parks department's, uh, you know, their portion of the snow removal effort. But I'll mention it. I don't know. Have you guys had any comments about that? Mm -mm. Nope. Well, now that I brought it up. <laughs> 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 Otherwise, um, that's all I have. Stay warm. Uh, this reminder, like Mary said, it in these cold temperatures, the uh, intersections do get slippery. Uh, Chief Gifferson, I, I'm sure you can attest to that. But it's a little slippery out there, so be careful on the sidewalks and driving. So do your fire hydrants. Oh, my you mentioned God. it last time. <laughs> you mentioned it last time, so I knew you would. Yeah, well, it's, uh, but you can mention it again. It's your, it was, it's your was, thing. It was so. kind of, it was kind of neat because I seen a, a what a Eagle Scout kind of took it upon him. That was part of his Eagle Scout deal to uh, clear hydrants. So he had some on Facebook about it, but uh, like. Uh, yeah, uh, especially what winds like today. I mean, they mm -hmm. do drift shots, so uh, help with the firefighters out. I mean, it, uh, the few minutes that it takes them to dig out a hydrant, the fire grows real fast. So uh, please take care of a hydrant if it's in front of your house. With that, motion to adjourn. <laughs> Motion by Pat, second by Chad to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried.